brother. This thing is heavy. Oh. <laughs> the things we do for our pets. Well, good morning, YouTube, and welcome back to Retired for Life. So before we get back to doing work on the foundation for the off-grid cabin, I've got a little repair to do. Believe it or not, this is a scratching post. Yeah, a little bit excessive, but the cats absolutely love it. But they really tear through the rope. So every couple of months, I've got to take off the damaged stuff, put together what's left that's still good and uh and redo it so we're going to get that done before we get into the serious work so this is not nylon rope this needs to be natural because cats have a tendency of chewing on things but i've not seen our cats do that i've seen other cats do it so i've got some 3 8 sizal here s-i-s-a-l and it's not nylon or anything. It is a, a natural fabric or natural material. So if they are silly enough to chew on it, <laughs> that's fine. And it is all biodegradable and that kind of thing. So we'll get this old stuff off and pretty much redo the whole thing. All right, we'll get this little task done and then we'll get on to the real work. Well, first job for today done. So you've got to wrap the sizal on this really, really tight. And then I hammer it down as I'm going kind of thing. And then use staples to put it into place. And it works very nicely. Now that will last for a few months now before they wear through this again. And I like to leave the top a little bit without uh, anything on it just to make it not quite totally simple for them, <laughs> but they never have any trouble with it. All right, we'll put this back for the cats and then actually start doing some work. Although this is pretty hard on the hands and it does take time to do. So we're getting ready here to continue work on the foundation and Chris is here to help for a little while. So he's getting the floor joists cut to length while I take them out and stack them after he's got them cut. Well, folks, it's morning and we're back at it again, but it's raining. So this is going to complicate things a little bit. So this is one of the storage tents with our lumber in it. And this pile here is for our floorboards for the cabin. Now there is our two by sixes for the outside frame and for the floor joists and stuff. They're all done and ready to go. So what Chris is going to uh, start doing is he's gonna cut our floorboards to length. And I am going to work on a separate little project that we're going to have a look at. So as you folks saw, we had basically our out outside frame fit together and we've done that up here in the shop. That has made it a lot easier to make sure that our boards that are spliced together are nice and flat and that kind of thing. And the other thing that it has given us is our finished dimensions for a lot of things. So that's why we can go ahead and actually cut the floorboards to a finished length. We know exactly what it is that we need for that. So that makes everything a lot easier. So the process for that is going to be cutting them to length. And then once they're to length, I'm going to run them through the planer to get them all to the same thickness and have a smooth finish on one side only. And then they'll need to go up to the sawmill once our weather is a little better and we'll trim off the outside edges on it just to make sure that everything is straight and everything is the same size 
so these floorboards all go together nice and neatly. So while Chris is working on that, I have got another little project that he's uh, brought with him for us to have a look at and see if we can build this. Now this is something that is out of my scope of experience. It is kind of a piece of furniture. So we're gonna have a little bit of fun trying to figure that out and put it together. But to make things easier, Chris brought a drawing. I'll show you the drawing here. Yeah, what is that? I work with computers, what do you want? <laughs> so after a little bit of discussion and deciphering, we have picked that drawing apart, got to the main measurements that we're looking for, and I made this drawing. Yeah, now we can actually figure out what we're gonna be doing or try to figure out what we're going to be doing and we'll go from there. So Chris is gonna get started on floorboards and I'm gonna go up to the other drying tent and pick out some boards for the top of this uh, table. All right, let's get to work. So the new part for me on this is this top isn't going to be one piece because of its size. I've gotta make it three pieces which means I need to laminate three boards together. Um, that's gonna to be a bit different. So I know there's a lot of people out there that already know how to do this, but like I've said, I've not done it before, so I'm gonna fumble my way through. So if you folks have got suggestions, comments, or anything like that, that uh, you see, or mistakes that you see that I'm making, and I'm sure there'll be a few of those, let me know in the comments. All right, I'm gonna go get my boards and we're gonna to get to work. So there's my top there. That's the boards I'm gonna use for that. I need a finished width of about 21 and a quarter inches. So I've got lots of room here. I'm actually 24 inches right now. So the first step that I'm going to do is I've got the crown side up here, so I'm gonna start running these through the planer, get them all the same uh, down to whatever thickness they happen to come out to uh, for nice and flat. So just so I'm working with straight edges, I'm gonna just take a little trim off of uh, all three of these boards on the outside edge just to straighten them up. Uh, and then run them through the planer. And I'm also going to take a fourth board, plane this one down to the same thickness, but cut it fairly narrow. And this is gonna be my pattern. And I'll show you what that's for. So let's get these trimmed in through the planer, and then we'll go from there. I don't think so. No, 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 it's never, ever, 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 ever gonna happen. I don't think so. No, 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 I don't think so. No, 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 it's never, ever, 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 ever gonna happen. I don't think so. No, 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 no Maybe someday You'll have it your way Maybe someday It'll all work out Well, I hope you guys have been enjoying today's video, and if you are enjoying it, I'd really appreciate the like, and I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. And if you've got any suggestions, thoughts, anything like that, I'd love to hear from you. 
All right, let's get back to work. All right, folks, so we've kind of got this planned out. So there is my top. Now, it's not finished to length or width as of yet. It's roughed in, but we're pretty much where I want to be on the thickness. So what I want to do to join these three boards together is besides just gluing them, I want to add three dowels in here. And of course, for a total of six dowels. So the tricky part is getting this all to line up reasonably close. So what I did was while I was planing these boards to thickness, I had one other smaller board that is the same thickness. Now I took that board and I drilled three 7 16 holes through it in the position for my dowels. And then I have clamped side boards on it and there's a little stop screw in here. So, and then there are top boards at each of the joints I've got numbered. So one, two, three, and four. So those are the four surfaces that I've got to drill in order to uh, get the dowels in. Now, hopefully, this will get my dowels reasonably lined up. Now, I don't have the reach with my drill press and that kind of thing to be able to stand this in the drill press and drill down in it with that. So I've got to do it by hand, which is why I made this board fairly thick. As I said before, I've not done this before. It's kind of learn as you go. I'm sort of applying millwright techniques uh, to this kind of thing. So let's start drilling our holes and see what happens. Face number one. So that's a good fit on there. I'm pleased with that. We are up against our stop. Let's see what it feels like to drill our first holes. looks pretty good. So what do you think of that idea? Is that something you folks would do or have done? Or was it wrong? Well, let's get our dowels ready to go in. All right, folks, we are in the process of putting this together. It is a good fit on the dowels. Gently. What? <laughs> it's not like there's video evidence. No. Let's see how we look here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is put it together. So all right, so that's our number two. Let's see how much trouble we get in here. Eh, I can never have too much glue. Make sure you leave it too. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay. 
ready when you are. More clamps? Still not coming together right. Uh, let's try something a little bigger. I'm gonna push this over this way. That did it. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now I'll get you to hold this. Mm -hmm. All right, make sure we've got things the right way around. There's our numbers. That's the short one. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Before you start banging on that too hard. Yeah. Okay. Up on top and hang on to her. Watch your fingers. So I'm not going to do that up too tight just yet. Go ahead and tighten yours up. Okay, now hang on, hang on. Yeah, well that worked great. Now we are going to have a structure underneath this too that hopefully will help bring it down flat. Now let's see. Well, that's not too bad. I mean, it's not perfect, but it is within sanding distance. Yeah. All right, we're gonna let this sit and dry. And then we'll start fresh tomorrow. Looks like we've got a couple more days of rain. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna get to that rainy day project we've talked about, my storage boxes, because of him. It's his fault. Sorry. <laughs> but we'll keep going with this. All right, folks. So I hope you have found this little video interesting. And as I said earlier, a couple of times, if you've seen something that I've done wrong, and I'm sure there's lots of that, I would love to hear from you. If you've got a better way of doing this kind of thing, let me know. But you've got to remember my limited equipment. I don't have an edger. I don't have a big drill press. So I'm kind of working with what I've got. I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out so far. It's not quite as good as I would have liked, but it's not bad. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. Remember to stay safe out there, be good to each other, and we'll see you out on the trails the next time. i give you a few comments right now if you want. I don't want your comments. <laughs>